Hey, hey, lovely to see you, gorgeous people. I'm bathed in sunshine. I'm hoping that my head isn't bathed in sunshine, but it's pouring in on me. My arm is so warm and I'm thinking, I'm hoping it just sort of goes up and it doesn't, I think it's going to go up and around, but we will see. I might be more bathed in sunshine as time goes on. I'm just going to wait for you guys to come in the door. It's an absolutely beautiful day down here in New Zealand. The sun is shining. The air is extremely still. There's not a breath of air out there. Oh, there's a few clouds in the sky. How are you? I can see you coming in the door. Hello, hello. Give me a give me a hi in the chat. Let me know what you're working on. I love to hear what you're knitting. And are you knitting any truly myrtle patterns? Do tell me because it's always nice to see what you're making. I'm going to show you some this morning that some of you know and some of you won't know. So we'll see how that goes. Hey, everybody. I'm just going to wait for your chats to come. And they come in the door. They're like dragging their knitting bags with them. Their cups of tea, trying not to spill all the things they're holding. Find somewhere to sit down. That's what it feels like. Okay, here we go. We're going to cross that off and then I'll be able to see you. Good morning, Morgan. She's working on the test. Good. I'm glad you're working on the test. Excellent. I'm loving seeing what everybody's working on in the test. Hi, Shell. Nice to see you. Hey, Sabrina. Nice to see you. Oh, about time, I reckon, Manda. So they've got clouds and ra trying to rain today. Well, good, actually. Down there in the South Island, I think, of New Zealand, that sounds like it's, um, it's about time because we've got sunshine. So we're doing it to a swap, which is about time. You're onto the hem for double time. Awesome. So those of you watching who are not in the test but have been watching along with the podcast will know that the double knit, the eight ply, the heavier weight version of the Timely Cardigan is coming. It's being tested at the moment. She's called Double Time, which I like that name. Makes me laugh every time. And uh, the testers are just going great guns. It's really nice to see them making them. Just making a space, fantastic. There is certainly an autumn nip in the air. There really is. It's um, we're definitely getting a little a little sense of autumn in the air. Not quite daylight savings here yet, but it won't be long. Hey everybody. Okay, so what I thought I'd tell you today was um, that the doors for wardrobe toolbox wardrobe toolbox open. The doors for wardrobe toolbox open on Saturday. That's the 18th of March. It's Saturday. Well, it's Saturday everywhere when you eventually get to it. But we will be uh, hitting Saturday before anybody else in the world because that's the way it works in New Zealand. But the doors open on the 18th of March and they stay open for 10 whole days to the 28th of March. Lots of people always jump in on the first day and that's absolutely fine. You can jump in whenever you like during that 10-day period uh, and keep an eye on your emails because I will let you know by email as soon as the doors are open. So if you are not already in Wardrobe Toolbox and you would like to join us, keep an eye for those emails and sign up. If you are in Wardrobe Toolbox, you can do, no do nothing. Just keep knitting, sit tight. You will roll over. There'll be no gap between months. There'll be just no gap between seasons. We go from March straight into April you have to do nothing at all, and you will come with us into season seven. So sit tight if you're already in Wardrobe Toolbox. Don't panic about that. It's all automated to set up. So you, you always, the thing about Wardrobe Toolbox is that the price you sign up with is your price forever. It doesn't change. So uh, it just you just roll on, roll on, roll on, which is quite nice for you to be able to budget and, under, and know, what you're, you know what's coming up for you. With every day that passes, it's feeling cheaper and cheaper, to be honest, because everything's getting so expensive. But so the people that are already in, you'll just sit tight and you'll, you'll roll over. New people, watch your, watch your inboxes for a little button. I'll give you a button. You click that and boom, you're in. Now, when you get in the doors, the new season doesn't start until early April. So you'll have two weeks to wait, roughly, before the new season starts. But you will be invited into the um, community on Facebook and you will be invited to come to the knit night that we're having at the end of March. We have a knit night on Zoom. So uh, you will be invited to all of these things. So just keep an eye on your emails and then come 
the beginning of April, that first full week of April, I'll send you an email with lots of buttons and links and a new pattern and all sorts of fun stuff. And you will then be uh, have access to the Wardrobe Toolbox website. That's the way it works. So I thought what I'd do today is I would show you some of the patterns that we've had in Wardrobe Toolbox over the last couple of seasons. Because the what I do is every second month in Wardrobe Toolbox, I release a pattern to everybody in Wardrobe Toolbox and nobody else gets it for at least a year. Usually it's a year. Uh, sometimes a little bit more. And so some of the patterns I'll show you, one of the patterns I'll show you today, you have seen because it's been more than a year, but the other ones you may not have even seen they're there. And when you join Wardrobe Toolbox, the season that you're in will come with patterns. So if you're in for April, you'll get the April pattern. Then we have a month off. And then if you're in for June, you'll get the June pattern and then we have a month off and then and so on. So every second month you get a pattern for the season that you're in. If you join, so let's say you join now and you've never been in before, you don't get those patterns from prior seasons, although you get all of the other content we've got, which is an enormous amount of content. It's like an encyclopedia, knitting encyclopedia. Uh, you'll get all the access to everything we've had before, but you won't automatically get access to those patterns but you can grab them you can buy them inside if you want them so you can peruse around and you can see any that you haven't already bought because some of them you may already have because they've already been released three years worth now uh and but you have the option of purchasing them inside wardrobe toolbox before everybody else gets them so i'll show you i thought i'd just show you what has come out in the last year that you may not have noticed that you may want to grab and that you can grab once you're inside. Is that clear? I try and say things really clearly because I know what life's like. It gets so busy and sometimes we just miss the details and it's quite helpful to um, have the details, I find. Not complaining, says Maureen, but you got too much sun yesterday. It was super warm yesterday, but I got really tired. It was so warm yesterday. Hey, Lynn, nice to see you. Good morning to the other person who's popped in. I don't can't see their name. And there's Beck. Are oh, you going to catch up later? Good on you, Beck. Yeah, you caught me live, Christy. Nice. Calling in from YouTube. Very good. Uh, okay, so I'll tell you what, what we had. So we're going, we're just about to go into season seven, which means we're just wrapping up season six. And this time last year, it was season five, right? So we work in these six month blocks. So I thought I'd show you, first of all, what was there in season five, because you don't, you won't, may not even have seen all of those patterns. So there were three patterns in season five. <clears throat> that came out these three and I thought I'd just quickly show you what they are one of them you will know the first one is this one it's the um, Viva Cal and I have already put this one out so some of you might already have it the Viva Cal just came out last month early this month I think uh, so the Viva Cal was that really fun one where we slip stitches and um, knitted it and then joined it and grafted it and made it beautiful, Viva Cal. So that was that was one that you've already seen. But the other two you haven't seen, and they will be out in the next few months-ish, uh, but I, should, I thought I'd show you those. So the next one that came out in season five, which was June last year, was this one, which is Wayfarer. And it's knitted in my Truly Myrtle yarn, actually. It was sort of a celebration of the new yarn coming out. It's the Liberty colorway. So it's a little cropped um top it's sort of a vest without it's it's it was my little ver it was not a vest but it, you can wear it like you would wear a vest a nice little short sleeved wintry top I, it's really useful in those in between times uh but it also comes with instructions for long sleeves so you don't have to worry if you don't want the short sleeves it also comes with instructions for long sleeves it's knitted top down it's a nice little set in sleeve when i brought it out uh, we actually had a whole lot of uh, lessons. We had a lesson with lots of little mini lessons about putting in your own top-down short row set in sleeve. And so I walked you through it step by step by step. This is how you do it for this one. These are tweaks you can make to other ones. If you want to put this kind of sleeve into a garment where it might have been seamed, this is how you do it. So that was the lesson that went with this. So uh, it's fun. Lots of people have made Wayfarer. I know some people are saying they're just wearing it to pieces. Um, they've absolutely loved it. So it's a, it's a good one. I'm looking forward to getting back into this one. It's DK. It's that nice plump DK. So Wayfarer will actually be out, will actually be out in a few months 
anyway to everybody um, because there's going to be more patterns coming out in my Truly Myrtle yarn, which is behind me, because there are more co colors coming. There are actually four new colors coming. It's quite exciting. But uh, so it will come out in that bundle of patterns that um, are coming with the new colors so it will come out but in the meantime it's not available anywhere except inside wardrobe toolbox but that has been I love this yarn it's got so much interest happening in it but anyway but the pattern is fun it's got a nice little round neck on it um, the cabling is a beautifully rhythmic it's all got twisted rib so that it just feels just a little bit smarter Amanda says I love how the pattern down the front breaks up the round and round of the body and keeps it interesting it sure does and I think it gives you that nice long line and the other thing we talk about inside wardrobe toolbox is shape and creating balance and looking at our shape and for some shapes this long line down the middle uh, is really a nice way of adding to balance giving yourself this nice long bring the, sh the, sh the shape in and down and it's or, or the eye in and up you know um is really nice to create balance and shape so that was the second one. Oh, that's so nice someone saying hi Livy and other knitters I love belonging to wardrobe toolbox community very much reminds me of the La Leche League community I was part of when I had babies and preschoolers informative knowledge sharing acceptance of individuals Barbara you know I was a La Leche League leader for seven years that's probably where I got my training and my mum was also a LLHA league leader and my sister is in the family so yes I think that um that was very influential influential in my life 20 years ago particularly when I had my first baby goodness he's nearly 21 actually mm. but uh I grew up with LLHA league meetings meetings in our house so I think it does play a huge huge role in my life Okay, that's really nice to hear. Uh, the other pattern that came out in season five, at the end of season five, it wasn't the last month, but the second to last month, were these cute little socks. They're called Jilly Socks. Now, these were fun. I What I try and do often is I try and tie the pattern back to lessons, and so I give you stuff to go with the pattern. I often will do that. Uh, so in this case, with the Jilly Socks, there's these little cutie shorty socks. You can make them as long as you like. Uh, they've got this pretty pattern down the front uh, on them. They're a really nice little knit. But what we did is they knitted toe up. So this, you start at the toe and we knit all the way up the body. And we talk about toes and we talk about casting on and creating toes and, and all of that sorts of thing when it comes to knitting them uh, from the bottom up. Now, one thing, I have a preference for a heel flap. I just find it fits my feet really well. So I've done like an upside down heel flap for these it's really nice uh, to modify to create uh, different spacing for high and low insteps so you can do that in these in with this pattern um, but it's really cute these have been really cute and they're a really nice fast knit a lot of people have made those for uh, gifts for people because they're super cute just to have popping out of your shoes and um, they've been really nice little gifts so they're plain on the back and they've got that on the front. But yeah, so they're knitted from the toe up. So they were just a cute little exercise. We've had a few socks inside Wardrobe Toolbox. And we've talked about uh, all sorts of things to do with the various socks that we've had. And we've talked about measuring feet. We've talked about how to make adjustments to heels to accommodate different feet, flat feet, high in step, that sort of thing. Uh, we've talked about adjusting for length. There's all sorts of things we've talked about. These were the first toe-up socks we had. We've had one, in the end, it worked out to be four pairs of top-down socks. Uh, and we've also talked about um, swapping cable panels into things, which doesn't just apply to socks, but one set of the socks we swap cables in. So all of those lessons and all of that information that I bring with those patterns is there. It's all there inside. And it's there are handouts and there are worksheets and there are things like that that you can grab, but everything comes with a video. So I talk you through it and I walk you through it uh, so that it's, I'm hoping that I that I meet various needs in terms of how you digest information. I, I do think about that and I try and, I, I try and t give you um, simple, clear information so that you can then take that and start using it yourself. 
Uh, Amanda says, I love those. We made them twice as per pattern and also use the base pattern to make a pair of men's socks. Brilliant, Amanda. They make a perfect birthday gift. Oh, yeah, that's great. I've seen them made quite a lot for gifts. They're a lovely little pair of socks. Good morning, Tanya. Nice to see you. So, yeah, so Jilly socks. So those, that made up the patterns that you got in season five. There were two accessories and a garment. I'm, I'm, I do mix it around a little bit. And as you'll see, for season six, I've done quite a lot of seasons where we've had two garments and one accessory. So I do mix things up a little bit. Um, so season six rolled around. That began in October last year. And the first pattern that we had in season six was a shawl. And it was quite a large shawl. And it was this one um, here, which is called Helia. And this was really fun. And what did we talk about with Helia? It was um, lace knitting. I don't know, actually. We, we definitely had lace knitting. We, talk, we talked a lot in our question and answer sessions about knitting um, about knitting lace, didn't we? But we've got quite a lot of lessons around knitting lace and fixing lace mistakes and ripping back without taking everything out and lifelines and all sorts of stuff about lace because this one is knitted from the top. Uh, in this nice mesh pattern. It's a really long, large, long, you know, crescent shawl. It looks fabulous on. You feel quite dramatic in her when you're wearing her for the winter. And then she's got this beautiful lace border with the PK edge, which is all knitted in one. And you knit that at the end. And you knit it. So you knit the, la you knit the, the um, you know, what's it? The mesh. And then you come to the end and you start your lace border and you knit it sideways. And if all of this, including the border, is knitted in one. So it's a long, it's a long run to the end. It is a long way to get from one end of this right through to the other. But once you get in the rhythm of the lace, it's actually quite uh, rhythmic to get to the end. And you just follow the lace around and around and around until you get to the end. Now I use a woolen spun for this and it just blocked out beautifully and it has a really rustic nature to it. But, you know, you could use a silk merino. It would make a beautiful, beautiful wedding shawl. Um, it would make a, a, just a beautiful, special shawl, I think. You can even imagine, you know, wrapping a baby up in it for something. They get their little fingers, I think, stuck in the mesh. But for something really special, you can sort of see how it could be quite, stu quite a stunning piece, I think. Uh, one of our members knitted hers in cotton and it oh it just looks incredible in cotton it looked absolutely beautiful and sort of creams and not not so creams um it was sort of a brownie color as well it looks absolutely beautiful yeah Beck is saying the lace is easier than you think yeah I, I try not to give you anything that's like absolutely mind-blowing I try and I try and like inch us towards things I personally don't like completely mind-blowing knitting when I knit I like to be able to relax. I like to, I do like to get my brain working. I do like to have a challenge, but I don't really want frustrating swear word inducing knitting. I, I don't really. I like it to be something that is actually pleasurable. So I do design like that as well. Um, Amanda said, another awesome pattern. This is what got my knitting mojo back after a couple of months of not wanting to knit. Oh, that's good to hear, Amanda. That's right. I remember that. So, yes. So Helia is just, uh, she's just beautiful. I'm looking forward to wearing her this year because she came out in October. And so I haven't really had a chance to wear her through the cold months, but I think I'm going to wrap myself up in this one and um, get a lot of wear out of her this winter. She's very, very dramatic. So she was the first one that we had in season six, which is the last season. That's the season we're just finishing up now. So she's available. So that one won't be out till the end of this year. It, it will be away in wardrobe toolbox and um, it won't be out till the end of this year. So you will have the opportunity to grab that one early. Now this one I have worn, worn and worn and worn and worn and I haven't washed it yet. So just bear with me if you see food on the front. It's because I've worn it so much. This was our pattern for December last year for season six. And she's called Paloma. So Paloma, oh, look, I folded her. I folded, look at the creases in that. Terrible folding. But anyway, I, I wear her a lot. And because she has a lot of linen in her, the minute you put it on, it'll, all these creases just fall out. She's pretty good. Um, I just grabbed her out of my bedroom. But Paloma was a really fun summer top. I made quite an oversized amount for me. And um, 
I'm I'm really enjoying that wearing her oversized over some sort of char. I've got these charcoal like jigging things that my sister left behind when they moved overseas. So I pinched all her old clothes. So I've been wearing it over those with a pair of um like you know slides like Berkey. I've got Birkenstocks little ones that just with a single strap, and I really like that look. Uh, with big earrings and my bangles and things. So I quite like that look. And I, it's it's great. I've actually worn this. We've had a really rubbish summer here. So it hasn't been like crazy, crazy hot. And I've worn this all summer. So um, the way that Paloma is knitted, she's a bit like my Nula and a bit like Serpentine. It's another version of that construction, which I love. I love. It's just so satisfying. To wear her is fantastic because these panels sit on your shoulders like that. So I think it's very, very, it's just a really nice feminine touch to an otherwise like super comfy top. So it just gives you, a, to me, I like it. It's like my perfect world. So anyway, what you do is you start by knitting the shoulders in this lace and that you knit both shoulders and then you pick it up at the back and you knit short rows to create the drop that you need because you can see it's got a bit of a shoulder drop happening there and you see how it goes downhill and you create that with short rows and then you pick it up for the front and you do the same you create the neckline and then you do those short rows see how it drops just that gives you a nice fit through your shoulder and then you knit the body um, and she's got quite a little bit of fullness to her body some people have made it a little bit um <laughs> Yeah, Tony. Um, and so some people make it with a little bit of a shorter body, uh, a little bit of a narrower body, and then it's more fitted. And that looks awesome, too. And I would actually like to do that for myself again, to knit it with a slightly narrower body, just so I've got a, a version of it that's um, that's just a little more fitted. And I've got some oh, scattered through my new color arrangement. I've got some of the same yarn, which is uh, I think it's got I'm trying to remember now it's a commercial yarn. And it's um, so it's easily available. This kind of yarn, it's I can't even remember what's in it now. Can you guys remind me? It's got linen in it, and it's got I think it's got silk in it, and it's just escaped me what's in it. But it's this lovely, it's lovely, summery, dr super droopy, droopy, sloppy, drapey kind of yarn. Anyway, then what you do at the end of that, which is unlike the other versions of this pattern that I've made you know, this sort of construction is I've then gone back and picked up a little sleeve. I really liked the sleeve on my urchin summer top that I wear, which is sort of a drop shoulder with a little bit of a, a little tiny sleeve. And I, I, I can see people have liked that. And it gives you a bit of flexibility about what you want to do with the sleeve, if you even want a sleeve. So I've picked that up and just done a little sleeve and carried on the lace. Do you see? So you leave those stitches live and then you carry it on. It's a very satisfying knit because it's not tricky. It's very, it's very, it's just step by step by step. You follow the instructions. You just can see what is happening. If you, if you take a deep breath and just go with the flow, it's a very satisfying knit. And then I used something I also love, which I used on um, similar, not the same, but very similar to something I used on um, Sesha is that little neckline where we have a little rolled neckline and I've got a little bit of rib there before the roll starts. So she was a fun one and she's got twisted rib. Oh yeah, she's got a high-low hem as well at the bottom. So she's really fun to wear. I've worn this one. I've been so, I'm so pleased with this one. So I've worn her a lot and she was, yeah, she was our December pattern. I'm also drawing a blank about what I showed you about Paloma, but I'm sure I showed you something. I think we talked about picking up stitches actually, didn't we? Uh, when it came to Paloma I think we did a bit we do we have done quite a bit about picking up stitches the best way to pick up stitches uh, we've also done in this last season we did a bit about schematics and making a schematic for you your shape and taking a schematic from a pattern and looking at it and working out how your body fits into this schematic and where from that visually being able to create changes that you then translate over into your pattern so we've talked about that as well all of this stuff all of these uh, all of this information is inside wardrobe toolbox so you can access it and we go back and we talk about it and we I refer back to it and I pull it out again where we need to um, this season coming up for season seven we're going to have some refresher courses so we're just going to have refresher sessions where we go back and look at some of those really key concepts 
uh, that we've touched on over the last three years to to just go back and relook at them. And for those people who are new, they might just want to start there as well. So there's a really good search page inside the Wardrobe Toolbox website. So you can go in and you can we've we've got buttons of various things to bring up a whole lot of topics on one well, a lot of lessons on one particular topic uh, you can put your search question in and it will come up with topics um, so that hopefully you can find your way around it helps to know what you're going to ask but there are lots and lots and lots of opportunities there are opportunities every month sometimes twice a month to bring specific questions to me to the general group uh, I mean, you can ask every day if you go and use the community feature, but to bring questions and get specific answers to your problems. So it's quite nice when you're unsure about what you're trying to ask to use that, um, to, to use us in that way. To, what am I trying to know? And, and then we can help point you in the right direction. Oh, thank you. Yes, it's this yarn. It's Fusion Luxurious. That's the name of the yarn I used, 40% silk, 40% linen, 10% merino, 10% baby alpaca. So it's it, it really is a great, it's a great summer yarn. And it's got, I don't know if you can see the little flecks in it. It's got these little flecks in it, which um, I suspect are the linen. Um, you, you can see the linen threads just kind of coming out of it. The lighter, the, some of the little lighter patches through it will be the silk as well, I suspect. So that was Paloma and... Uh, so she was our second pattern in the last season. I have to have to take a breath, see what you're saying. And then the third pattern, uh, which has only just come out. So it's a long way from being, a long, long way from being released to, into the wild to everybody else because it only just came out in February, uh, is this one. And this is Maeve. And people are busy, busy knitting on Maeve right now. And Maeve is a jumper. So we had two garments in that last session, in that last season. And I often will do that, give you two garments. Um, sometimes, usually when I do that, it's a summer top or a smaller top and a garment. Um, so that you get, I just like to give you a bit of variety. So this is uh, Maeve. And she is a very plump DK worsted weight garment. Uh, I use Kelly and Co. from Skeins. It's that lovely woolen spun um, tweedy yarn that they, it's a pure merino, but they have it spun in Ireland. And uh, so it can't even fit her in. She's quite a long, verging into slight tunic style jumper. She's knitted from the top down in the round. And she's a yoke with this reverse stockinette, but you don't have to do reverse stockinette. I've talked to you about, you could use the other way round. She's knitted totally inside out so you don't actually have to do pearls for her you get to knit her inside out you don't have to even tackle pearls till you get to the bottom so she's got these groovy little pockets that pop in at the bottom and uh, I used a contrasting color inside and then they have this little pocket lining at the back here which is all stitched down so our lesson that came with this one was all about pockets and we talked about putting pockets in and we've talked about different kinds of pockets and we talked about creating a beautiful finish at the back of your pockets so that they all so that you just get a really beautiful finish <laughs> is what we're trying to do but I haven't had a chance to wear this one and I think I'm going to wear her a lot this winter she is really cozy she's extremely comfortable I wore her in the photos with a nice long necklace at the front and I again I think this is one I'm going to reach for over and over again she's supremely warm and just pretty really pretty without being sort of fr frilly she's just pretty which is just what I like really so she's that lovely combination of casual and pretty and or casual and feminine is kind of what I like um, with lovely details and not too much floof um, so she really is my cup of tea so that is uh, Maeve, and Maeve, yeah, Maeve won't be out till next year. So if you like Maeve and you want to have a bash at that for this winter uh, or, or the Northern Hemisphere for the end of the year, then she'll be available inside Wardrobe Toolbox um, now. She's there now waiting for you when you join. Um, 
Maeve, someone says, Maeve is a gorgeous winter jumper. I'm looking forward to wearing her when the temperatures drop. I knitted using Malabrigo Rios and reversed the hem lace pattern. That's right, you did too, Barbara. And um, two of you made it with Malabrigo Rios, which is supremely divinely soft, absolutely lovely. It will be this, but also have good drape to her, uh, good good drape to it because it's it's just that it's quite smooth and. Um, I'm trying to think of a, it. It's just got that lovely sleekness to it, even though it's quite a, a woolly look to it, that yarn. It's the softness. It's just incredibly soft. So it'd be beautiful in Malabrigo Rios. I, um, yeah, it's definitely a larger jumper. So it's longer than, I think it's longer than any of the jumpers I've made so far um, without swamping me. But again, you know, I, we talked about, it's got a slight A-line to the shaping. And we've got lessons in there about creating shaping from under the armpits and this a-line shaping and i talk you through how to do it we talk about putting in waist shaping and where to how to measure yourself for that and how to put that in there's lots of um there's a lot of information in there that people tell me that the wardrobe toolboxes tell me has been really helpful to just flesh out some of the stuff they didn't know but also teach them things from scratch or at least i think the thing I hear overwhelmingly is the encouragement just to have a bash because why not? It's only knitting. Let's have a bash. Like you can literally, you can do things if you put your mind to it. I, I just, that, that's just my philosophy on life. And so if you've got the tools there and we talk you through it and we say, go on, I know you can, you can, of course you can. And then you have a bash and you find you can. Whoa, that feels good. It feels so good. So these were the patterns from season six. I kind of, by the end of a season, it's really interesting for me to look back and see that there's sort of, I don't know, they the seasons, my brain must work in such a way when I'm approaching a season that everything kind of, there's sort of a flow in terms of colors or mood or something like that in a season. So I definitely got into more um, kind of texture in terms of my yarn for that season. And this one, there's definitely a clarity of color. There's this clear colors that come through. And when you go back and you look at the different seasons that I've done, because you can go into inside Wardrobe Toolbox, you can click and you can see, look at things by season. Uh, and you can see all the patterns at the top of the each piece by season. And you can definitely see themes. I find that totally fascinating because I don't think about it like that as I go into something. But things sort of just come together as we're going along, which I really like. I really like it how that happens. Okay, everybody, so the doors will open on uh, Saturday. I will send you emails. I will also send you emails if you're inside Wardrobe Toolbox reminding you you just have to keep knitting and do nothing, that you will just roll on over. And if you want to join us, now is the time. Uh, the doors will open for 10 days from the 18th to the 28th of March, and then they will close. And they will not open again until September. And so it's six months and, and you'll be looking and wishing you joined and you, and you, that's it. You can't join again till September. We like to get everybody in at the same time and to start you all off at the same time. And we've got a bunch of people then that come in and uh, everybody's so friendly and welcoming and sort of come on, move in. There's a place next to me. You can settle in. It's really nice. It's a really, it's really, really lovely. The people make it so fabulous inside there. It's very supportive. Uh, someone said, I think even if you've been knitting for years, there's still a lot to be learning by being in wardrobe toolbox. Well, I hope so. And I certainly find that myself. You know, I've learned an awful amount just doing th these things with you. And uh, I, it's endlessly fascinating. There are always more things to learn. And particularly when we take a moment to actually consider us in the equation and, and we're knitting for ourselves and making things for ourselves and we're diving into our stash and we're thoughtfully thinking we're putting thought and consideration into the things we want to be making and what we're purchasing. And then uh, I just, I love it. That sort of holistic look at, at our, um, at our creations for ourselves. And then we get to enjoy wearing them, which is amazing. Okay, everybody, I will see you next week. If you have any questions about wardrobe toolbox, the doors will still be open next week. So you can bring them um, to me and I will endeavor to answer them for you. But um, yeah, just keep an eye on your emails. I will see you next week. There's lots of fun coming. 
I'm just, I cannot wait to show you these new yarn colors. We just finalized them yesterday. I was like, yes, 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 yes. Oh, goodness, now we've got four, four, four new colors coming. So we've still got all the old colors. Um, some of them will be, uh, we, we are going to sort of slowly wean some off and then introduce new things. But at the moment, there's a little bit of everything here. So if you want to order yarn and get yourselves ready, there will be a collection of patterns coming for truly metal yarn. So um, in a variety, some sports, some DK, garments, mostly garments. And uh, so if you want to grab some now, while you know this stuff here, do that and uh, we'll get it in the post to you. But yeah, I'm looking forward to these new things. It'll be a few months off yet because partly because poor old Skeins, you know, they've had a really, uh, it's been really tricky for them after the cyclone and uh, dying is not easy at the moment. Uh, learning to knit to fit and not being afraid to rip back if it's not right has been an awesome learning curve. That is an awesome learning curve. Doesn't it feel good though? It feels, I don't know, you conquer mountains when you, it really does feel a bit like that. All right, everybody, I will see you later. See you next week. Happy knitting and uh, enjoy, enjoy the weather out your window and I'll see you soon. Bye everybody. See you later.